Hey everyone, Fuse Man coming at ya. Following up from our last week's video, in this video, I wanna dive into the second sample that is provided with VR render streaming, which is around HDRP. Now, HDRP is a rendering tool that allows you to get really high performance graphics with high visual fidelity within Unity that you can use when building out your VR games. It is very compatible with VR, but We'll talk a little bit more about the advantages of using HDRP, why consider it in the first place for cloud streaming or VR streaming in general. And then finally, I'll quickly show you how you can get the sample up and running, which to be honest, is really not that complicated. If you do find this video helpful, make sure to give it a like because that really does help out the channel a ton. And if you're excited for more upcoming VR render streaming videos, definitely consider subscribing to keep up to date with all of that. First, what is HDRP? HDRP stands for High Definition Render Pipeline, and there are plenty of videos out there on the topic, so I'm not going to go into all the specifics that you can get on those, but at a very high level, it is a scriptable render pipeline that is provided by Unity to allow it to be even easier to customize the graphics and get high-end graphics running within Unity. So beyond some of the higher quality optimizations that they do at the shader level, you get a lot more fine tuning when it comes to various different graphical workloads. I think the most obvious and really exciting part is real-time ray tracing. And this comes in quite a few different factors and of course is dependent on your GPU, but real-time ray tracing can mean something as complex as ray tracing your whole scene or and the, the more practical case, at least for the time being, is being able to do things like screen-based occlusions, refractions, uh, getting finer tuned lighting detail for objects that might not necessarily be in your scene, but if you bounced a ray around in your scene, you'd be able to hit and capture shadow details, things like that. There's a lot of really cool things that ray tracing allows you to optimize for that also make it easier to get the higher end visual fidelity. And I think that's kind of one of the really cool things that, that you get with ray tracing. I've done a few experiments on a cloud server, for example, running an NVIDIA T4. And while no, you can't do the ray traced path tracing for really high end graphics, you are able to run various different ray tracing workloads so that you can actually build out more high fidelity scenes. And I think that's one of the key tenets to really doing VR render streaming in the first place is that you're able to actually build out high graphical fidelity without taxing the headset and not requiring a very high end GPU in the first place. So that's just one example. There are other examples as well. So from a lighting standpoint, one of the nice features that happens to be in with HDRP is that you could use physically based lighting. What that means is as opposed to uh, trying to guess how a light maps from the graphical space into your game space, you can actually put in parameters such as the lumens that your light needs to generate and map that exactly one-to-one -one with the real world. And that allows you to build out physically realistic scenes that are dependent on the source of light that you get. And I think that's amazing. So that's some of the key advantages that you get with using the high definition render pipeline. And honestly, as I mentioned earlier, if you're aiming to use VR render streaming, you really wanna be targeting HDRP solely due to the fact that you are using render streaming because you want to build a high fidelity game or application and stream that into a low end device. So let's go ahead and see how you can do that by hopping into Unity real quick. Starting from a fresh Unity project, first thing we'll need to do is import in the Fused VR SDK for VR streaming, which is available on GitHub. And all you have to do is follow these setup processes. So let's first go ahead grab the link for the git repo, head to the package manager, and then click add package from git URL. Go ahead and paste in the fused VR link. Once that's finished importing, you should now see this within your packages. 
Let's also go ahead, open up the samples here, which you should now be able to see. And then we'll go ahead and import in the HDRP VR render streaming sample. This pretty much provides you with the template for HDRP, which is typically provided when you first create a HDRP Unity package, which is what you would first create when you're creating an HDRP template for a new project. And then one thing that is missing because samples unfortunately don't have dependencies that get as used as requirements, we'll need to head back into the Unity registry and then find the HDRP package, which we'll go ahead and click install on. Once that's finished importing, you'll now see the render pipeline wizard here. This is actually pretty much mostly set up so we can ignore that. And you'll actually notice that if you have the default scene open, it now looks very different from what we're used to. But we can actually go ahead, head over to our samples here now and go ahead, open up the HDRP VR scene. And this is what you might've seen at the top of the video, which is the template scene that is used for HDRP here. Nothing too fancy other than to show off the high definition render pipeline in works. Just to confirm that this is working, I would just head over to your project settings and then click on graphics, make sure the HDRP pipeline asset is included here. And that should be the case because it was already imported in. And so that just confirms that everything is working, which is great. This HDRP pipeline asset is actually responsible for a lot of the post-processing effects and just general effects that you might see happening within this scene. So things like the depth of feel, motion blur, for example, are things that you'll see. Now for the purposes of VR, I'd actually recommend turning some of these settings down or completely off. So for example, just going straight up zero, zero, zero on motion blur, because that could lend, lend itself to motion sickness. Similarly, you might want to play around with depth of field or any of those types of components. Uh, you can also play around with those on the post-processing settings that is associated with the vol volume here. Again, these are tied to vignetting, exposure, white balance, chromatic aberrations. You can play around with these and that's kind of one of the nice parts about using HDRP is you kind of get these high fidelity post-processing effects that you might not traditionally get with definitely not standard Unity. Um, you could play and tinker around with your universal render pipeline, but high definition gives you the, the best control and visual fidelity. The last thing I'll point out before testing this out is if we head over to our directional light. You can see what I was talking about in regards to physically based lighting. So you see here, you can set a temperature very similar to the lights here that I have within my room where you can kind of fix the temperature if you want it to be warmer, if you want it to be colder in terms of Kelvins, which is kind of the traditional lighting value. And then you can also go ahead and change the intensity based on physical units. So in this case, based on Lux as the unit here. So that really gives you that physical based control over your lighting as opposed to kind of guessing an intensity value, which may or may not work in every given scenario. The only other thing that to really check and confirm that it's working right is the render streaming asset that's already been baked into this sample scene here. I would just go ahead, confirm your render streaming settings specifically again, I have an AMD card, so I'm going to disable the hardware encoder support, but otherwise you can go ahead, click play, give that a second, and then that will go ahead and connect to the WebRTC server. And then let's head over to Fuse VR's Unity render streaming, and then click connect to cloud instance. That you can see here has already gone ahead and connected. And in my case, I actually have Oculus connected here. However, the second I click enter virtual reality, it's going to go ahead and disable the screen for recording. But for testing purposes, you can see that we have the WASD up and running here and running pretty slowly in part because the AMD card is one, not doing hardware encoding. And then two, on top of that, it's doing the encoding and decoding, which can tax your GPU, plus you're running within Unity, which in and of itself is not optimal. So all of that, and you're, you're gonna see low frames per second, but the point still remains that in, in optimal scenarios, you can totally use this to, to stream out high quality VR. Hopefully that shows you how easy it is to integrate HDRP into VR render streaming. It's designed to be not a complicated thing. And then you can mix and match this with say the VRTK sample, you add HDRP, and then have a really high fidelity visual 
and very immersive VR experience streamed through a browser. And I think that's still such an incredibly powerful tool. And in the following sets of videos, we'll be taking a look at how you can get this deployed on the cloud. And this works also both with HDRP as well as for Windows, as well as for Linux, which I think is really awesome. And we'll be taking a look at that next. So if you did find that video helpful, and if you're excited for those future videos, definitely make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more coming down the pipe. Otherwise, until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.